The risk of flash flooding growing for many as training storms dump inches of rain over small periods of time. We'll talk about when and where in today's video. Welcome in folks, great to see you. And uh, hopefully we're having an all right middle of the work week out there. And unfortunately the theme the past a uh, week or two now has been flash flooding and I see more of it on the way uh, for the next uh, couple of days, including the potential of severe weather, but I really want to hone in on that flooding threat. I think that'll be something that we, uh, you know, need to discuss in today's video. We've already seen, unfortunately, how dangerous and deadly flash flooding can be. We've seen it in Texas. Uh, we've had confirmed deaths in North Carolina from Chantal now. And uh, we had flooding of it in Chicago yesterday. We had a flooding of it in New Mexico. Uh, so it's on a lot of people's minds. And I think, uh, you know, the one saving grace is that it means people are probably paying more attention than maybe they would have been uh, prior. But uh, definitely something that we're going to discuss heavily in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. So you're up to date with the uh, always changing data here and my analysis of that data. We have daily videos here on the channel. Uh, so again, always trying to keep you folks informed. Also follow me on social media. You can uh, find that in the description or you can just search my name uh, wherever you want. Again, my name is well right under me. So uh, just search that up on pretty much any social media platform and I'll pop up. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive on into it and start talking weather. We'll start with our satellite loop today. And uh, there's kind of a key component that I want you to notice in today's loop. And it's uh, this kind of boundary that you're seeing between the water vapor, uh, where we've got a lot of water vapor here in the east out in front of this uh, frontal boundary, and then some uh, less so behind it, we'll say. And that's where the flooding threat is going to be the highest day, is along and in front of that boundary where we have this tropical air mass. We don't have a lot of upper level winds. Uh, but we do have uh, instability. So we're going to get these storms to fire up thanks to that uh, instability just due to the boundary. And uh, they're not going to move very quickly. The upper level winds, again, are not um, very strong. So these storms are very stagnant. In fact, in some places, they're going to train today and tomorrow. Uh, and then another thing on top of that is because of the tropical air mass, we have a ton of moisture to squeeze out in the atmosphere. And those are all ingredients for a flash flooding setup which I do think will unfortunately occur for some folks today. Now, we're going to hope to keep this uh, at a tame level. We're going to hope to not get, uh, you know, 15 inches of rain or anything like that. Uh, but I do think some people are going to see, you know, half a foot or more of rain over some of these training thunderstorms. And it's due to that air mass here in the eastern United States. And outside of that, there is severe weather to talk about. Out in the northern plains, we've got some energy out here. That's going to lead to uh, rounds of strong to severe storms through the northern tier of the Great Plains over the coming days. Uh, nothing new. It's been a very active severe weather season out there. That trend is continuing for folks out that way. But those are really the two main players on the map. Uh, here on this Wednesday. Now, as for what's happening down here at the surface, well, uh, it's kind of making sense. We have flash flood watches now in effect. That's what, uh, or just flood watches, I reckon is what these are. Either way, it means the same thing. It, it could flood today due to this uh, heavy rainfall. But uh, that is in effect uh, from Anson and Richmond County, North Carolina, all the way north through central North Carolina, right where Chantal just tracked through. Partially, that's why we have the flood watches, the criteria uh, of rainfall to lead to another flood is a lower because the ground's already saturated. Uh, and then that goes all the way up through Danville, Lichburg, uh, Richmond, uh, Petersburg, up into Charlottesville, DC, the DMV, the Delmarva included in this, uh, the I-95 corridor from DC all the way up through uh, central Jersey here up to Trenton and uh, kind of spread it out, uh, you know, both ways east and west under the gun today for flash flooding due to that training. Now, I will add, just because you're not in a flood watch does not mean you do not have a chance of seeing flooding. If you're in uh, the Western Carolinas or uh, the Eastern Carolinas, even down into Virginia Beach, I think you too very well could see it. It would just take a little bit more uh, than the places that are under that uh, flood watch due to where Chantal recently tracked through. Again, already dealing with uh, saturated grounds for some of us. And you can see that rain coming. Yeah, here it is. Here's the boundary I told you about already firing up showers and storms along the Ohio River Valley. Uh, we even could see a little bit of flooding out there with this setup. But I really think east of the Appalachia chain is where the threat will be the highest. But again, you can see that boundary uh, playing out uh, as uh, depicted earlier on the water vapor loop. Uh, out west, hot and wildfire concerns are growing. We've got red flag warnings. We've got gusty conditions, dry conditions. Um, and that is leading to increased fire dangers from Arizona all the way up through portions of Washington state. So uh, active time frame for a lot of us. And uh, unfortunately, that's uh, that's what we're seeing. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at some upper level data, break this down for you a little bit more, then get into the severe weather outlooks and the flooding outlooks for the days ahead. Per usual, we're going to take a look at our upper level map. And I think this is going to show the severe weather threat and the flooding threat quite well. 
Uh, so we'll start in the east. I told you about that boundary. We saw it on satellite loop and uh, you can see it on our vorticity map as well. Again, we've kind of got some boundaries clashing here leading to this area of vorticity uh, kind of right into this zone. And guess what? That's exactly where the boundary is uh, this afternoon. And I'll show you this is very slow moving. That's this afternoon. By the time we get all the way to tomorrow afternoon, a full 24 hours later, this has gone from Southern Ohio to Virginia, basically. Again, not moving very quickly. And it's that slow moving nature of this that it could lead uh, again to some of those training thunderstorms and that flash flood potential that we're going to need to watch out for. Uh, now, that's one thing. We've got a couple other pieces of energy. We've got one up here into eastern Canada. We've got uh, a piece of energy back out of the Rockies, another piece of energy even further north into the Rockies. Those are going to be more severe weather makers than anything. Uh, those are going to increase some wind shear components and increase the chance of all hazard thunderstorms uh, through the days ahead. And you can see that quite well on the severe weather map. Also add though, we could see severe weather due to this boundary in the southeast. You'll see that here as we take a look at that severe weather potential for today. Two slight risks up, uh, that's level two out of five and uh, even a little area here in eastern Michigan associated with that uh, piece of energy up further north into Canada that I showed you. Uh, we'll start into the southeast, slight risk from Charlotte all the way up through Philadelphia and all points in between here. The only threat out here really is going to be straight line winds, at least in terms of what we would consider severe criteria. Now, still heavy rainfall. Uh, obviously, the wind I mentioned it could see a little bit of small hail. Wouldn't be overly concerned about that. And then uh, frequent lightning as well. Uh, we've already seen this summer, Lake Murray, South Carolina, we had a dozen more people uh, injured by a lightning strike. So you got to take lightning serious with these storms too, although that's not technically a criteria for severe storms. Still something that can impact your daily life. So, uh, you know, take uh, precautions there when thunder roars go indoors. Back out to the plains, a little bit different story, more all hazards here. In fact, you can see the tornado threat today. I yeah, could see a couple spin ups here, or maybe even uh, more than a spin up. I always say spin up out here, and it ends up being this massive photogenic tornado. But uh, from Pierre all the way up to Bismarck and uh, really much of the central Dakotas today, could see a couple tornadoes not out of the question with some of those storms that begin to form. Tomorrow, day two, uh, more of the same. We've got uh, three slight risks now, but uh, we'll start in the east again. Uh, main threat out here, like I mentioned, will be strong straight line winds, frequent lightning, heavy rain, maybe some small hail. Um, straight line wind threat will be the highest in the yellow here in the Carolinas. Again, uh, for much of the Carolinas, from Charlotte, Columbia, Greenville, Spartanburg, Augusta, all the way out towards Fayetteville, the triad, the triangle, you get the point, uh, strong straight line winds there. Back out into the plains tomorrow. Again, more of an all hazards type day. Again, you can even see the tornado outlook is present for portions of Nebraska and even into extreme north uh, eastern Colorado there. Ray Sterling, the usual suspects here in the high plains of Colorado, uh, which have actually, funnily enough, been to uh, these areas storm chasing before. So, you know, a uh, little tidbit about me. But um, yeah, I could definitely see, again, a couple tornadoes tomorrow out that way. We're not done. Here's your Friday. No slight risks, but again, it's day three, so they're going to go a little more conservative. More of the same, folks. All hazard risks in the plains with hail, strong wind, and maybe even a couple tornadoes, and then just a wind threat really out into the mid-Atlantic. This is kind of downburst, typical summertime potential. Those are the severe weather maps. Let's take a look at the flooding maps and kind of why we have it a little bit more in depth for the days ahead. One big reason that flooding is going to be a potential today is due to the fact that we have enhanced precipitable water. And same thing tomorrow. Uh, and basically, this is just a fancy word or phrase for how much water is in the atmosphere. How much water can we squeeze out uh, with these thunderstorms? And the uh, brighter the colors you see here, or the more pinkish, purplish colors, the higher amount of water there is. And then out into the deserts of the West, those are the more dry colors. That's why we have the fire threat out there. So today, we've got very high values. Uh, this is even high for summertime. It's already normally high in the summer. You know, these summer thunderstorms, they drop a lot of rain quickly. Uh, the anomalies today are above average, meaning even these numbers are high for July. Uh, but this means we could see rainfall rates of two to three inches an hour. And if you get that with training thunderstorms and you get just two hours of that, folks, you've got almost half a foot of rain just like that. And that's what leads to these flash flooding potentials. Uh, it's something that we've seen already plenty of and we don't want to see any more of. So again, that's what's really driving this today into the eastern part of the country uh, is uh, the high P watt values. Now, how long is it going to last? This is today. Let's go into tomorrow for your Thursday. Another day I think flash flooding could be a potential. And I'll remind you, the boundary is going to be kind of right in here tomorrow. Everything out in front of it is where we could see the rainfall and it's in that very moist sector. So your Wednesday, your Thursday, today and tomorrow, those are the big days. By Friday, I think we back it up a little bit. 
Uh, on the threat scale, again, the highest values start to move east off uh, shore a little bit. Again, still the eastern Carolinas down into the southeast, high P watt anomalies, and the boundary still lingering enough to sh uh, shoot off some showers and storms. Uh, but um, again, I think today and tomorrow will be the main threats for that flooding potential that we're talking about. Uh, now, you can see this from the Weather Prediction Center as well. They've got uh, that flooding potential, a moderate risk. That's one level down from the highest level possible. And unfortunately, it's right where you don't want to see it, right where Chantal just went through. Richmond, Lynchburg, down to Martinsville, Greensboro, Danville. Uh, we've already got saturated grounds. And today's forecast, as you'll see in a minute with the forecast models, indicate that, yeah, we could once again see heavy rain. I'll caution you, though. You do not have to be in that red area to see flooding today. Anyone... Uh, shaded in on the map. This includes even out into the central plains, but all the way down to Charlotte, Columbia. Uh, I would also watch, I'll go ahead and extend this myself a little bit. I would watch this area from Greensboro to Durham, all the way back down to Siler City and into portions of central North Carolina. We had Chantal work through. We've got saturated ground through here. It would not take much to exacerbate flooding potential once more. So just because you had Chantal move through does not mean you're done with the flooding threat. Again, we need to watch that today. Uh, down into that region. Charlotte is well included in that, the mountains included, uh, but again, the highest threat going to be in that red area today. And then that does go up into Philadelphia as well with the yellow slight risk. That's for today, Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday, yeah, we need to watch again in two areas. We found out yesterday, uh, yeah, the Midwest can get in on the action as well. Just outside of Chicago, half a foot of rain fell over a short period of time leading to flooding. Watch it tomorrow. We're going to have some heavy storms with these complexes that work on through Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Omaha, back to Cedar Rapids. Uh, could see that potential of flooding. And the Mid-Atlantic, again, under the bullseye, Charlotte, Raleigh, drew, uh, into the Triad, up into Southeast Virginia, again, kind of the same areas, that extending up into the Northeast as well, with flooding potential for your Thursday. We'll bring it into Friday. Again, I think by Friday, we simmer down a little bit, but still watching areas of uh, the front range out west, again, New Mexico. We saw what happened yesterday out there. These desert areas with these burn scars, it does not take as much rain as it does in the east to flood. In fact, only a couple inches fell yesterday when we had that catastrophic flooding in New Mexico, but the water just cannot go into the soil due to burn scars and uh, just the type of soils out there. So uh, you can see that there in the Midwest. Again, those complexes of storms could lead to flooding. And again, that leftover boundary going to lead to the potential of some flooding down into the southeast. All right. Let's take a look now at mesoscale model data. Let's break this down for you, time it out, and then take a look at uh, the more medium to long range after that. Well, here's the latest model run that we're working with. And uh, again, we'll go ahead and time it out for you. Uh, we've got these storms that begin to fire up this afternoon and evening. And notice pretty widespread in nature. Uh, and the heaviest storm's going to be likely on this line from uh, Pennsylvania through Virginia down into the Carolinas. And uh, I'm going to keep that area circled. Here's five, or actually, this is six o'clock. Let me back it up. This is five o'clock, six o'clock, seven, eight, nine, ten tonight, eleven, midnight, and then into early tomorrow morning. Uh, folks, that's a lot of hours of storms in the same area and not moving very quickly. That's the problem today. Again, slow moving, sometimes training, a lot of precipitable water. Uh, unfortunately, over some areas that already have saturated soil, it's basically all the things you would need to check off for flooding potential. So that's what we're watching today. Now, the severe threat is there as well. Again, we could have downbursts in these storms. That's uh, when you get a ton of upward energy with that thunderstorm activity in the summertime, a lot of instability. There's no wind shear to shift it left or right. So it just then comes crashing back down on itself. And it's like a splat on the ground of wind. So again, strong straight line winds in some of these storms could be something to watch. We'll also add some sea breeze action, typical Delmarva magic, as we call it, uh, could occur out here in the Maryland, Delaware, and uh, portions of Virginia. Tornado threat could be slightly elevated there. Not an off the chart thing. You folks out there, it seems like have been tornado alley of the East Coast over the past little bit. Today, again, could be a scenario where a couple tornadoes try to spawn. They would not be very strong likely, but uh, again, still something to watch. Uh, as that's happening back into the Northern Plains this evening, yeah, those complexes of storms, more the same for my folks out there uh, seeing that potential. Um, some good news this afternoon, we could see some sea breeze action down into Texas and the Gulf Coast, but uh, areas that have been rocked hard by rain finally beginning to see some drier conditions out there. Not completely dry, but better than it has been. So that's good news for folks out there towards the Austin area uh, and the San Antonio area and even up towards Dallas has been rocked so hard by heavy rain. Uh, that's today. Overnight tonight, again, still some showers and storms in the east. Not completely pulse activity. Remember this boundary moving through, um, going to aid convection even into the evening. The northeast seeing some showers and storms overnight tonight. And by the time we're waking up tomorrow and getting into Thursday afternoon, 
We're going to do it all again. Tomorrow's map looks a lot like today's map. You can see in the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, up the East Coast, pockets of heavy rain, thunderstorms, strong straight line wind potential. Again, highest in South Carolina and North Carolina tomorrow. And um, that's spreading all the way up the East Coast to where we could see, again, some stronger storms and flooding potential for your Thursday. Uh, and then also notice by Thursday and the overnight Thursday, there's more complexes of storms in the plains. I told you, do not rule out flooding in Nebraska, Iowa, uh, and in around those regions. Yeah, heavy thunderstorms uh, and uh, very heavy rainfall rates in those as well could lead to flooding potential. And that gets us to as far out as this model goes Friday morning, uh, where you can see, again, still thunderstorm activity in the northern plains due to that northern stream energy that we've been tracking. All right, let's zoom things out again. Uh, take a look at a couple more maps, and then I'll let you go on this Wednesday. Taking a look at the upper level maps once more, but we're going to excuse me, but we're going to uh, kind of move ahead in time a little bit, uh, and you're going to see that um, yeah, more of the same on the way. It's dominated by Northern Stream Energy that's moving it pretty quickly, and uh, you can see here by Friday, yeah, this again could continue to lead to severe weather and maybe even flooding potential up uh, into the Midwest, up into the Northern Plains, even potentially into the Great Lakes. That works on through, and then often what happens, folks, is they kind of leave these boundaries behind them. Again, we've got strong upper-level winds in the northern tier, uh, but these storms that are created by that create fronts that drag all the way south, but then they lose the jet stream and they kind of stall out into these boundaries. Here's another example of potentially another boundary left over uh, by this weekend, and that once again could lead to afternoon showers and storms being prevalent uh, wherever these boundaries kind of lay up and just get stuck. So that's really the theme for the foreseeable future. Uh, not seeing a big change from that uh, here in the models moving ahead. What about severe weather? The good news, in terms of all hazard severe weather, really the supercells, um, they're going to get uh, stuck up north. Now into the south, we've talked about afternoon thunderstorms having strong winds, lightning, maybe a little bit of small hail, but uh, outside of sea breeze action like today in the Del Marva, the tornado threat, the large hail threat, uh, the all hazards threat relatively low outside of the northern plains. And you see that here, the supercell composite from the GFS continuing to flare up the stronger storms uh, really up north more than anywhere else and uh, even kind of dying it down a little bit after uh, the middle to end of this week. So we'll hope that that is the case. Um, uh, let's time it out for you again with the uh, European model, um, just showing you what the radar could look like uh, where we left off at. We'll start here on uh, your Friday morning, again, where we left off in the last model. We've got thunderstorm activity up into the Midwest. Uh, you can see by Friday afternoon, still thunderstorms in the southeast, slowly working their way, uh, their way east. And I think by Friday, this boundary is going to lose some steam, still afternoon thunderstorm activity. Uh, but I think, again, today, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday, can be the highest risk days for heavy rains uh, there in that area that we've been talking about through the mid-Atlantic and southeast. That's for Friday. Let's get this on into Saturday for your weekend. And uh, yeah, that storm in the Midwest cranking and having a front associated with it could bring thunderstorm action all the way down and even potentially to Oklahoma. We'll watch that for severe weather and uh, again, higher into rainfall potential as well. But notice by Saturday afternoon here, uh, if I could keep the map on the right time frame, let's see if I can manage that. Uh, yeah, by Saturday afternoon, still storms down into the southeast, but becoming a little more scattered compared to widespread or even numerous. Uh, like we've seen, and that looks to be a common theme by Sunday afternoon. More of the same. We've got a leftover boundary, a new one that's setting up shop here. Uh, we'll watch this one for, again, increasing flooding potential with some severe weather as well. And that gets us all the way through this week. Uh, and we'll take a quick look at next, uh, next week, see what the models are showing. And uh, it kind of looks like, well, a lot more of the same on the way. How much rain over the next, uh, just we'll do the next five days. We won't even look at the next seven here. Uh, and again, highest totals over the next five days are going to be into the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. You can see, uh, you know, three to six inches. That's a pretty widespread number. Isolated spots easily going to get half a foot of rain just over the next two days, honestly, probably. And that's why we need to watch for that flooding potential. Uh, and again, anywhere from South Carolina up through the Delmarva and into the I-95 corridor of uh, the mid-Atlantic here, Philly, up towards uh, New Jersey as well. Other hotspot going to be the Midwest, where rounds of these northern stream energy uh, working on through, again, could increase flooding threat for you as well. Alrighty, folks, uh, one final thing I'll mention. I didn't pull anything up for the tropics today. I don't see anything over the next five days to be concerned about. There are some signs in the models uh, that some of these leftover boundaries, uh, should they drape down across the Gulf, could try to get something spinning up down here. Um, not something I'm overly concerned about right now. Uh, but if the models latch onto it a little bit more or it looks to be a growing threat, we'll talk about it. Uh, as for the main development region of the Atlantic, it looks pretty quiet. Taking a look at some of the ensembles, maybe by, uh, this is far from now, maybe about a month from now there's a signal. 
Uh, I know that's way out there. And again, we're not going to go super in depth on that, why we have these more pressing issues in the near term. But tropics, not seeing anything super concerning right now, at least for the next five days. Maybe next week something tries to get going. I'll keep an eye on it and keep you updated. All right, folks, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. and I'll see you all tomorrow.